All right, I want to do a little bit more of a challenging example. And this is something we introduced a little bit earlier. We talked about these questions where you will have a graph, you'll have some data points, a line of best fit, and then you're going to be asked to determine some constant from that information. So I said that these questions are more to introduce you to that skill for Physics 30. But we want to, like I said, we want to kind of just start putting that in your head a little bit. So let's look at what's being asked in this question. So we've got this graph. It's going to show the force of gravity as a function of inverse of square of the distance between two objects. So both of these objects being analyzed, they have the same mass. So using graphical analysis, we'd like to determine the mass of each object. Okay, so first and foremost, what do we have? We are told that we have FG on the y-axis, and we're told that we have 1 over r squared on the x-axis. Now, for all of these questions with the graph, the first thing we need is an equation. Well, we're looking at force of gravity. We have 1 over r squared. So the equation that we want is going to be Newton's law of universal gravitation. So the equation that we want to use is this one right here. This Fg equals G m1 m2 over r squared. Now, I'd like to simplify that a little bit. We were told in the question that mass 1 and mass 2 are the same. So we're just going to call them m. So what I really have here is I got this Fg equals G mass times mass divided by r squared. Well, we know m multiplied by m is just going to be m squared, not 2m, m squared. So I have this fg equals g m squared over r squared. So I have an equation that we can use. Now we have an equation that we can use. So the first thing we'd like to do is we'd like now, or sorry, now that we have an equation, so we want to isolate the y variable. Well, good news. The y variable is fg. We already have that, so I guess step one's complete. And I've mentioned before that a lot of times you will have that already done. The y variable will be isolated. So step two is to separate the x variable from everything else. So in this case, the x variable is 1 over r squared. So I'm going to take this 1 over r squared, kind of divorce it from everything else. So we're going to separate x variable. So to separate the x variable, I still have this lovely fg equals. So now I'm going to put in brackets here what's left. So I'm going to take this 1 over r squared bit, and I'm going to put it out here. What's left if I take that 1 over r squared out? It's going to be this gm squared. gm squared multiplied by 1 over r squared is the same as gm squared over r squared. This is the two pieces separated. Now I have everything isolated in this form y equals mx plus b because we're told on our graph fg is the y variable. We're told 1 over r squared is the x variable. What that tells us here is that this gm squared, that is the slope. Now we don't have anything else here, so we could say that in theory the y-intercept should be zero. Now with that, what this tells us, so we have that slope equals gm squared. So the slope of this line of best fit here, the slope of that line of best fit is going to equal the universal gravitational constant multiplied by the square of the mass. Or I could say m is just going to be the slope divided by g, and then all square rooted. So this is the hardest part of the question, is to actually get an equation that relates something we can calculate on the graph to things to the and relate that to the actual equation in question. So that mass of this object is going to equal slope divided by g. Hopefully you'll also see why I'm writing slope. Like we use m for slope, but I'm already using m for mass, so I don't want to confuse the two. If you want to use a number, another symbol for slope, like whatever you want to use, go for it. As long as you know what it is and you're consistent, perfect. So the next thing and the hard, the second hardest part, we got to get the slope of this graph. So I need to find two points that are easily identifiable on this graph. 
Now let's have a look here. I think this point, it's pretty close to something I can identify. So I'm going to say that this is the point 1.40 meters to the minus 2, and this is 8.00 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. So keep in mind, and this is a common trick on these graph questions, Keep in mind we have that multiplier there. So all these values on the y-axis are being multiplied by 10 to the minus 7. Watch for stuff like that. So I got that point. And then this point up here, this looks pretty easily identifiable too. So I will call that the point, we'll call this 4.60 meters to the minus 2. And then this data point is 29 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. So I have two data points. So to get my slope, I got to do y change in y over change in x. So I could say this is x1 and y1. We'll say that that's x2 and y2. So using that information, I am going to determine the slope. So my slope is going to be that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So on your y's, don't forget that you have that 10 to the minus 7, because like I said, if you forget that, you're going to get an answer that doesn't make a lot of sense. So we've got that 29 times 10 to the minus 7 minus 8 times 10 to the minus 7. And then we're dividing that by 4.60. And then we are subtracting off 1.40. So again, we don't expect you to get the exact answer. On an exam, We would I would calculate the exact answer of this using Excel. And then we'd say as long as you're within like 5% of that, you're doing A-OK. -okay. So let's see what we're going to get for this slope. So for my slope, and you may get something a little bit different, I'm getting about this 6.5625 times 10 to the minus 7 Newton meters squared. So just a comment on the units here. I'll just kind of put that down here. What I have is I have newtons up top, and I'm dividing that by meters to the minus two. Well, we know anything to the inverse power is just gonna be one over that, so we know that newtons divided by meters to the minus two is really newtons divided by one over meters squared, and then newtons divided by one over meters squared, we can, this is the same as multiplying the newtons by the reciprocal of this, so then we'll get that newton meters squared. So that's how we're getting the units on this. Now that we have the slope, we can take that value and we can put it into our equation here for the mass. So we're going to take that slope, we're going to divide it by the universal gravitational constant, and then we are going to square root that whole thing to get our final answer. Let's see what we get out of this. So for me, I am going to get out of this, I'm going to get about 99.2 kilograms. So as I said, on an exam, we would get the exact answer and say as long as you're within about 5% of that, you're doing fine. So based on graphical analysis and using my slope, I've determined that the mass of each individual object is going to be about 99.2 kilograms. As I said, these questions are a little bit challenging. Again, we're just doing them now to just kind of introduce you and give you a feel for them before, you, you know, you, for those of you that end up at Physics 3 before you get there.